Welcome back to the Nullified Take, where I've got the TNT takes for you on Australian Survivor Blood vs. Water Episode 11. I've just finished watching the latest episode, and here is my five takeaways for this episode. So, firstly, KJ finds a new home at the Blood Tribe. She seems to be fitting in really well, kind of like I expected in my previous video. Um, she's already nudged out Shay and Mal within that Alpha Alliance, and she lets us know very early on in this episode that before um, she actually came over to the tribe and she was an original tribe, she had a very close relationship with the likes of Josh, Mark, Jordy, and now obviously with Josh and his cousin being together by proxy, Jordan is probably going to be a part of that alliance. So um, at this stage, it does look that this worked out extremely well for KJ landing in the Blood Tribe. And Shay looks at this, she's really worried, she knows that um, she may be on the outs, and she's really disappointed because she thought having an extra girl there uh, potentially would have helped her in that tribe, which is a male-dominant um, alliance that is running that tribe. And she also mentions here that losing Nina really hurt her game, and we obviously know from the previous episode that Nina and Shay was close, so um, KJ seems to have some legs in this game now, and I'm very optimistic for where things are going to go for her moving forward in this game. Um, my second takeaway for this episode is that uh, Jesse, the kid, wants to finish the job here on Ben, and he's got his alliance fixated, um, and he feels like, or fixated on Ben as a target, and he feels like he's got that close relationship with Chrissy through Croc. Him and Croc have been close throughout this whole game, and he's also got Sam, so they look at themselves as the tight four within that alliance that can make these moves happen. Um, Jesse also feels that comfortable in his tribe that, like a super fan of the show, he's happy to throw a challenge to finish the job because the twist allowed for someone like Ben to remain in this game and he's afraid of what that means for his own game if, Je if, if Ben does make it to the merge um, and he does link up again with Shay will he be coming for Jesse and Jesse's actually shocked that um, he does seem to get away from this whole blind side on Ben um, without any blood on his hands um, and that you know at the end of the day Chrissy is the one that seems to be getting most of the wrath of Ben um, and you know, well played by Jesse all round. I can see he's an extremely good player of this game. He's a strategical threat, a social mastermind of the game, and I think that he could be a real contender moving forward in this game to go all the way unless somebody wisen, um, sort of gets wise to the idea that he's actually playing a really good game, which it doesn't seem that anybody's really um, focusing on that, and they're really underestimating him because he's the kid, like they like to call him, in the tribe. Um, also here as my third point for this specific episode is that Croc emerges from the surface of the water tribe and he gets out and he puts his target on Jesse. Um, and, you know, he is probably one of the few people in this game who starts to realize that Jesse is a really big threat. Now, obviously, he's been close with uh, Jesse throughout the game. It sounds like they had a really good relationship um, from the original tribe that they were on. Uh, but he notices that if Jesse remains in this game, He's good at challenges, um, he seems to be good socially, he's strategically really good, making this big move happen against Ben, um, who Ben thinks that he's still very close mates with the kid, um, and he correctly assesses where he is in this game, and he realizes that if he does not take a shot at Jesse right now, that he may go into the merge at the bottom of an alliance um, instead of actually dictating his own fate. Now, ultimately, Croc wants to make a move here that's not going to work out in his favor this episode, but you do have to take your hat off to someone like Croc. There's many a players that play this game. Uh, they're complete passengers. They don't try and take um, you know, the, the, the whole game by the scruff of the neck and really um, you know, put, a, put their own stamp of authority on it and then they end up going home without even trying to play their own game so you know i i was i've been hard on croc this season i've said that he hasn't performed that well in the challenges which is something that you would expect looking at someone like croc that he was going to bring that physicality to the challenges but you know i take my hat off to him he seemed to have a reasonably good strategic mo uh, mind for the game now the big thing here that he wouldn't have been able to predict is that him trying to save ben is ultimately not going to work but the other part of this as well is and it's really interesting to 
see this episode is the relationship between Croc and Chrissy and how Blood versus Water, the theme, can really mess up your game uh, because Chrissy has got certain players she enjoys playing with and Croc wants to go in a different direction and save Ben. So they've got um, opposing uh, priorities in regards to how they see the game moving forward. And, you know, Chrissy ultimately really struggles with that. Um, and I think that, you know, Croc appreciates it, but he probably doesn't appreciate how much Chrissy actually struggled with it. I mean, Chrissy kind of called, um, you know, Jesse her son, even in the game. And I think that emotionally um, she found something in Jesse and, and hats off again to Jesse for just playing a killer social game that she really relates to and she wants to protect. Um, now, Ben, this episode as my fourth point, goes completely rogue against Croc. You know, he gets the warning that the hit is on. They're going to finish the job against Ben. Um, and Croc says, don't worry about that. I'm going to turn the votes around. I've got the likes of Michelle. I've got Chrissy, myself. Um, we're going to get Khan on board and we're going to turn it around and we're going to take Jesse out of this game. What's really interesting to me here in this episode is that Ben is not wise to the idea at all that Jesse is the one who put the hit on him originally, and he goes right to Jesse and Sam to say, hey, this is what's happening, Jesse, you're going to be targeted, doesn't feel good, does it? Um, and I'm happy to work with you and do a blind side on Croc, um, which for me, you know, in hindsight, I understand that we as viewers, we sit on the sidelines and we see the full picture of what's going on. It absolutely does not make sense to go against Croc, who's the only person who's been trying to protect him in this game, the person who went out of their way not to vote for them in the previous episode. Um, but I think what happened here, you know, trying to put myself outside of the viewer's mentality looking at the screen is that, you know, Ben was betrayed by Chrissy and I think Chrissy betraying him gave him a bad taste in his mouth, even for Croc. And he thought like, listen, Croc, you could have spoken to Chrissy or you could have given me a heads up and you didn't. So you're dead to me now. And maybe because he was even closer to Croc, um, that stung him a little bit more, even than the Jesse blind side. And therefore he wanted to go against that and went straight to the enemy and Jesse and try to work with Jesse in this vote. I hope that makes sense. So um, I, I kind of understand where he's coming from, but I think he made a horrible mistake. Um, you know, obviously with the 2020 vision that we have as viewers, because um, Jesse and Sam is not going to be loyal to him. They want to get rid of this guy before he hits the merge or, you know, even if he does get to the merge, I don't think he's going to be a loyal number to them at all. Where with Croc, he would have been in a power position where Croc would want him to be a part of that alliance with himself and Chrissy and potentially even Shay. Like I could have easily seen Croc pull Shay and he was not intimidated by the fact that Ben is a physical beast and that he could do good in challenges. And that's what Ben needs. He needs people that does not see him as a threat physically. Um, the one thing I will say about Ben and where I do give him a bit of credit this episode is that he actually laid low um, and did not react the way you would have thought Ben would react. Like if you looked at him in challenges, the guy wears his heart on his sleeve. He goes hard in the challenges. He gets frustrated, even this episode with his team members as they throw this challenge. Um, and by the way, the perfect challenge to throw when you've got the relay with um, having to go through a maze, balancing a ball, and each individual has to can do it. Like it just worked out. The survivor gods delivered Jesse and Sam the perfect opportunity to throw a challenge here. Um, but, you know, hats off to Ben for actually remaining calm and trying to use confusion and talking um, to Sam and Jesse here to try and turn the vote around. I, I mean, there's a lot we don't know. Um, and maybe he knew that there was never a way that Jesse was going to get voted out and he needed to save his um, his behind. And the only way he could do that was to throw Croc under the bus. I mean, we don't know that. But, you know, in hindsight, 2020 vision, I think it was a bad move and I don't think it's going to work out well for Ben. Chrissy. Last point, fifth point here, finally get to talk about Chrissy, one of my two favorite characters this season. Um, she ultimately gets blindsided here this episode. Um, she talks a lot about having to play this game with her heart um, and, you know, between her heart and her head, she doesn't know which way she's going to go. She ultimately does not vote with Croc here and Croc does get voted home um, and out of this game and he leaves with an idol in his pocket oh man like it always hurts me to see players leave with an idol in their pocket um, you know and she really feels 
I think like she let him down and she feels betrayed by those people that are close to her in the game. So I'm very interested to see with Chrissy now. Um, there was a lot of talk about plotting revenge and, you know, JLP, I forgot what he said exactly in the end. I just finished the episode, but, you know, it, it's, the camera was right on Chrissy's face when JLP talked about revenge. And I think she's going to plot some revenge here. I don't know if it's going to be against Ben directly, you know, but I hope she goes against Jesse and Sam here. Um, they are the two that probably betrayed her the most, but you can't blame Jesse either. Like, I mean, he knew Croc was coming for him, but I'm interested to see how Chrissy can adapt from here and play this game without Croc. Um, and, you know, she's new to the game, but she's played it now for 20 plus days. So what can she do? Like, let's see all this edit that we've had with Chrissy manifest into something great. Like, I want her to be a big player come the merch. So I really, really hope she can step up from here. And I feel really bad for her that she lost croc um in this episode um i also wanted to make an honorable mention as my sixth point as i'm trying to keep these videos really close you know khan being able to again keep that island in his pocket i think it's like the third or fourth time this um season that he's gone to a tribal council and he didn't play as idol i mean the um can't use the word on this but he's got really big you know what for being able to not play the idol so hats off to him it's worked on worked out for him so far and somehow he's going to get to the merch with that idol in his pocket and i feel like we could see a lot more from khan come the merch and i'm hoping we see this khan is my other favorite player that i like to see in this game i just don't get enough edit for him at the moment to think that he's a real contender to win the show but i do think he's dangerous um, and he potentially could make some waves come the merge those are my five takeaways for this episode. Um, if you like this kind of content, please like this video, leave a comment below. Let me know what you agree or disagree with. What would you have put in the five top um, takeaways for this specific episode? Um, I always really enjoy getting comments and I read all of them, try and reply to all of them. And um, I will talk to you guys tomorrow night when we do our final episode for this week. So excited for that. Um, and we've got a special guest towards the end of the week to do the podcast with us. Um, Way will be on the podcast so so many things happening here on the channel uh please subscribe to support it and i will catch you guys next time